You may have heard of Ethelwald from the Last Kingdom. Today, I will tell you the true story behind the life of Ethelwald, or as I would like to call him, the Etheling that never became king. Ethelwald was born in the 9th century, at the height of the Viking Age. During this time, the Viking raiders who had descended from the sea had invaded half of England, and only parts of Mercia and Wessex remained independent. Ethelwald's father was the King of Wessex during this turbulent time, but when he fell in battle, Ethelwald's fate would become uncertain. This is his story. First, let's look at his ancestry and early life. Ethelwald's father was Ethelred I, the King of Wessex. Due to the nature of what was going on in England at the time, Ethelred was a warrior king. He defended his lands from Viking attacks, and would fight amongst his men in many battles against the Viking armies. A notable battle was the Battle of Merton, in which the Saxon armies lost many men. Just two weeks after this battle, Ethelred would die, reportedly from his wounds. He would die at the tender age of 26 years old, leaving two infant sons behind, one being Ethelwald. Due to the attacks from the Vikings being so frequent, the Eldermen and Lords of England chose Ethelred's younger brother, Alfred, to succeed his brother as king. They did this as they needed a battle-hardened warrior to lead them through those dark days. Alfred would later be known to history as Alfred the Great. Alfred would carry on his war against the Vikings and would win a crucial victory at the Battle of Eddington, saving Wessex and the whole of England from Viking rule and dominance. Ethelwold would have grown up in relative comfort, but life must have been somewhat difficult for him. His father was a king, but had died when he was extremely young, and growing up all he heard was tales of his slain father, and his uncle was now the king, and he was well loved. Eventually, in the year 899, Alfred would die. Ethelwold had a good claim to the throne, as he was an Etheling. Due to this, Ethelwold made his claim to the throne of Wessex known. His cousin Edward also put a claim to become the next king. In the throne room of both of their fathers, the cousins would make their claims known and wait for the Witten to make a decision. Alfred, however, had made his son one of the most powerful men in Wessex upon his death. He left his son Edward most of his property and estates. He left Ethelwold only three estates, which were all in the less important eastern part of the kingdom. Alfred also assisted his son by promoting important men who could be relied on to support him when the time came. So although Ethelwold was the senior Etheling, Edward held more power and influence. This culminated in the decision of the Witten, granting the crown to Edward, Alfred's son. Ethelwold would storm out of court, and an eerie feeling lingered in the room. The Witten and the new king knew that this could mean civil war. Ethelwold also commanded men, and he was still a prince and a notable lord. Ethelwold and his loyalists would seize the royal estates of Winborn and Christchurch. Edward swiftly rode with an army to Winborn, and they would make camp there. Ethelwold declared that he would live or die there. He then left in the dead of the night, not being able to gather sufficient men to face Edward in open battle. He then rode to Northumbria. Out of desperation, he went against what his father Ethelred had died for, and sided with the Vikings. He did this as just with his loyalists, he would have had no chance against Edward's armies, but with the Vikings on side, who commanded all of the Danelaw, which was half of England, he knew he had a greater opportunity. The Vikings in Northumbria embraced Ethelwold, and accepted him as the King of York. Northumbrian coins were even issued, bearing Ethelwald's name, conveying his proclaimed kinship. Ethelwald's rule in Northumbria was short though, as although he now had influence and a seat of power, it was his father's seat that he so craved, the throne of Wessex and the last jewel of England. Ethelwald only saw Northumbria as a base for gathering his strength until he was ready to face the armies of his cousin Edward. 
After around two years in the north, in the year 901, Ethelwald sailed with a fleet to Essex, where again he was accepted as king by the local Vikings. He even received the submission of the English rulers in Essex, strengthening his claim to the throne, his army, and his morale. Ethelwald's quest for the throne led him to Essex, where he formed an alliance with Eric, the Viking king of East Anglia. He travelled throughout the Danelaw, making it known that he was the true heir of the crown of Wessex, and no doubt promised the Vikings much, should he ascend to the throne. He would soon grow bold enough to launch a full-scale raid on Mercia, ravaging its lands up to the border of Wessex. He made his presence known to Edward, and this could only mean war. Ethelwald then crossed into Wessex, and insulted Edward further by raiding the lands of Braden. Edward would not sit idly, and he raided the lands of East Anglia. The Vikings upon realising that their lands were in danger, turned their army around and marched towards Edward's force. Edward knew that Ethelwald would have a considerable army with him, and he withdrew his own. The men of Kent, however, disobeyed Edward's order and stayed to fight. This would then result in the Battle of Holm. The Viking army would overwhelm the men of Kent. Ethelwald would be in the thick of the fighting, making it known that he was a warrior king just like his father. But in the thick of battle, Ethelwald was killed, as was Eoric, the Viking king of East Anglia. The Vikings won the battle, but at the cost of two of their kings and commanders. Ethelwald's rebellion had some promise, as he was supported by allies from Wessex, Northumbria, East Anglia, and Mercia. He basically had friends all over the country, and had a claim to be the most powerful ruler in England. Perhaps that's why Edward was so reluctant to face him in battle. Had he not been killed in the Battle of Holm, he may have just united England, with far less warfare than what was necessary. But at what cost? As if he did retake Wessex, he would have owed his Viking allies much. However, all it took was one moment, one swing of the sword, and all of Ethelwald's work of campaigning and uniting the Danes and Saxons against Edward was undone. When he died, Edward was unopposed and carried on his expansion of Wessex. So what do you think of Ethelwald? In the Last Kingdom, he was made out to be a treacherous drunk Although it makes for good television, Ethelwald seems like a far more complex person than what he was portrayed to be, and he almost comes across as a misunderstood villain. Let me know your thoughts on Ethelwald in the comment sections down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.